Hey team, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to be looking at the date function date a trunk. This is the great way to trim off unnecessary values inside of the date and time values. In this video, we are going to look at the date trunk function. It's an awesome function that allows you to kind of like a reset the uh, date stops. Now notice it's at a specific precision. So you can see here, I'll always be printing out the current date and then I will trunk at the uh, allotted period. So let's do the first one. Let's see what happens here. Notice it truncates me all the way back to the beginning of the century, 2001, January the 1st. How about the year? From these on out, you'll be noticing after the period that I select, it zeroes out the next period. So here you can see that I wanted year, but it restarts my month. When we do month, you'll see it restarts the date. And you can see today is September the 26th. It's 8.30 at night. So here I'm going to do the month. And remember, it'll just kind of do it before that. So here's the year, here's the month, and this is the day. So the truncate truncates the period after, you know, like the current period, it rolls it back to zero. So when we say day, we're expecting, you know, like all the uh, hour, minute, seconds to go away. Let's see that. And notice I got to the day and the hour, minute, seconds go away. And now at the hour, I would expect the minutes and the seconds to go away. Notice it gave me the eight o'clock and the minutes. You're starting to see the pattern now. You know, I got to the minute and the second. Now the only thing that's left is the milliseconds. Now one that I kind of found a little bit confusing is the week. And then I had to realize what is its start date. So for instance, when we execute line 24 here, Notice that it rolled back to 920. Today is 926, a Sunday. 920 is a Monday. So that is the first day of the week. So, and this, tr this quarter works just like the week. So they're just based on seasonal, you know, quarters of the year. And our last one was um, July the 1st. Now we always need a little refresher on current date current time and current timestamp. That just shows you the periods. So here you see the date, the time, and the timestamp. Now, now and current timestamp, they are the same. They are the same uh, date and time. And then I wanted to do some pausing in the middle of a transaction to see kind of like who really keeps up with the time. And of course, if you're familiar with the uh, date and time, you know which one works. But if you don't stay on top of it, you know, it's something you might forget. So notice here, I'll be using transaction timestamp. I'm going to sleep two seconds and then I'm going to call the transaction again. Ready? I apologize for the two seconds. So anyways, it's a 926, 84131, 84131. There is no difference on a transaction timestamp. Now what about on current timestamp? I got a before, after. How about we just go down to uh, 1.25 seconds. Execute. And notice 8.41.57, 8.41.57, it's the same. Now on clock timestamp, which is the one that really does work, it's going to like a change the actual time. We'll do the full two seconds and let's see this happen. And here we go, 8.42.18, 8.42.20. So you see that if you're inside of some type of transaction where you actually need the actual time, you should be using clock timestamp. And there you have it, team.